Okay. Hello, and welcome to the HTML5 lecture series at SNHU. I'm Tom Adamson, visiting professor, and this is lecture 23. This is on CSS3, and it's 2.5D. You may say, wait a minute, what's 2.5D? Let's look at the screen here, and I'll show you. Here's an image of 2.5D. It, what it is, it's really a two-dimensional object made to look like a three-dimensional object. That's what 2.5D is. Now, let's go back here to the board. What you're going to be seeing today does not use the canvas element. This is important because we mentioned earlier that one of the advantages of HTML5 is that it had a canvas element where you can do graphics. The graphics that you just saw on the screen is not done using the canvas element. What it does, it is working in two dimensions. In other words, with the object that you just saw there, even though it looked like, like this, it's actually working in just two dimensions. It's working on the, along the y-axis and the x-axis. So that's what we're doing today. What we will be doing in the future is working in three dimensions. Now you might say, oh, we're working in three dimensions uh, in HTML5, all you need are three axes now. The X and then the Z axes, which come out here. Well, in a sense that's true, but it's a lot more complex than that. Because in th true three dimensions, I also need to have a camera object. And you might say, a camera? Why do you, would you need a camera to work in three dimensions? Well, I have this chair here. Okay, I don't know, can you see the chair? I have this chair here, and this chair is three dimensions, but I'm the camera because I can walk around it. So in, in true three-dimensional work, I need to put a camera so I can walk around it. And the other thing that I also need in real three-dimensional work is I need a light source. So I'm going to put the chair back and go back to the board. I also need a light source. And if I have the light source moving, I also need to create shadows. In two, in two dimensions, I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So you might say, wow, that's a lot of work. Yeah, you got it. That's the reason why we have so many lectures in this series. It's so you can understand enough stuff to begin to do this. Now, with the model that we've had here, you might ask yourself, well, isn't there a program that where I can do this automatically and I don't have to code it? Yeah, there probably is somewhere, but let me explain something to you. Let me explain what a technician is. A technician knows how. A professional knows why. 
And that's what this series is for. This series is to help you become a professional in HTML5, not just a technician. Technicians are important. They need to know how. But professionals need to know why. And that's what, that's what we're doing here. When I have this kind of an object at, at 2.5D, I can actually create a game with this. I can make this to be buildings or something like that. This is called an isometric uh, drawing. And the way these drawings work is that there's an angle right here and an angle right here. These angles are equal. They may not look equal the way I have them drawn. Each of them are 30 degrees. There's another angle up here along with the top, this top part here. These are, this is also 30 degrees. And I'll call this the top. I'll call this the left. And I'll call this the right. Now, the, the commands that I'm going to use in order to do this in CSS3, I'm going to use rotate. I'm going to use uh, skew. And I'm going to use scale. And I'm going to do this, the, this top, this right, and this left using the box model that we talked about in the la last lecture. OK, so what I'd like for the camera to do, please, is go to the screen there, and I'll start writing out some code so that we can see what these different things are doing. And I'm just going to come here. This is my code screen. And I'm going to use my uh, come here and do new my favorite editor. And I'm going to call this uh, my uh, box. And it's going to be uh, .html. And I say yes. And then what I'm going to do is expand this a bit so we can see it. I'm going to right click on this. And I'm going to open it with uh, Notepad. And there it is right here. And I'm going to start out, of course, by putting in a doc type, as we've done before. And it's going to be HTML5. And so using that, that tells that's what it is. Then I'm going to start my root element. Then I'm going to come here, and I'm going to go, this is the head. And of course, it needs a title so my search engines can find this, my great uh, 2.5D uh, box, B-O-X, B-O-X, OK. And then close off title. Now I have, that's my title element. This is where I'm going to put my style, my CSS3 stuff. I'm going to put that in here. And I, I don't like a background to be just pure white. So I'm going to make the background of this gray. And this will be in the body element. And I'm going to make the background I'll make it a gray. Okay. And then we'll close that off. And then for now, we'll close off the uh, we'll close off the head. Okay, and here comes the body. And I'm going to put here uh, an H1 element. Put my great uh, two point 5D uh, D design. Okay, this would be my great design here. Close off the H1, come down here, end the body element, and then uh, end the root element. Do a control S to save it, and then I'm going to move this out of the way here. Come back here and double click. And there it is. And for some reason, I don't see. Uh, this is my great 2D box. Oh, I didn't close off style. 
Okay, so I have to do that. Let me close that off right here. I'm closing tag for style. Okay, I do a control S to save it. Come over here, refresh it. Now it says migrate 2.5D design. So what I need to do first is I need to make uh, that, uh, that box model. And in order to do that, if you recall, I came down here and I had a uh, division element, DIV, just like this. And then I closed it off, uh, DIV, okay. And then what I did is I went up here into the style and I styled it, the DIV, okay. And uh, I had a height and a width, if you recall. W-I-D-T-H, I'm gonna make it equal, 100 pixels. And then I had a height, and this was also 100, 100 pixels. And then I had a background color. And uh, I'm gonna make it red. And then I had a, um, a border and the border, uh, I'm gonna make it, uh, say, five pixels. That'll be the thickness. And then the space, and I'm gonna make it solid. The space, and I'm gonna make it black. So I can give all these three commands in one line for the border. The, the delimiter is a space. I don't need a comma or anything. And then I'm gonna come here and, um, and then do this like that. And let's see what happens now, okay? There's a control S to save it. I'll come back here and I'll refresh it. And there it is, there's my super duper rectangle. What I wanna illustrate now is I wanna illustrate the things that we're gonna be using. Remember I said we're gonna be using rotate, skew, and scale. So let me put in here a, a rotate and keep in mind, remember what, what we had to use? We had to use this web kit, okay? And then, uh, and then after that, uh, the web kit, it was um, transform. And then we had, what, what transform did I want? Rotate, and I can rotate it 30 degrees, uh, 30 like that. And I put in degrees so it knows it's not radians. And I put in a semicolon. Okay, let's see what that does on my output when I do that. I come over here and I refresh it. And there it is, rotated 30 degrees. And it rotated it along the x-axis, 30 degrees. So from here to here is 30 degrees. Let's take away the rotate 30 degrees and let's look at a skew 30 degrees, S-K-E-W, okay? Control S to save it, and now I'm gonna refresh it. Now there's been skewed 30 degrees. Now, what I can also do is I can move it from the left. Like for example, I can put over here left and I can put, let's say I wanted to move over 50 pixels. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. Now watch what happens when I try it. I saved it, I wrote it, it doesn't move over. The reason why is because I didn't put a command in here to make its position absolute. So I must do this. I have to do this. Position If I put that in and do a control S to save it, and I come over here now and refresh it, now it moved it over. Stay on the screen. I need to show you something here when I skewed this. Now everyone agrees that I made the width and the height the same initially, right? That's not an issue. Okay, but then the, the transform, I skewed it by 30 degrees. Here's what I want you to observe. Notice now that along the x-axis, these sides are of equal length, but they're no longer the same length as the sides along the y-axis. These, the length of this side here has actually gotten smaller than the length of this side. Now stay on, stay on the screen here and I'll show you something. 
I'm just going to click back here to the original demo that we had. And it may not be too obvious to you that that's what's happened here. This box was originally uh, the same size, but it's been skewed. It's actually been skewed and rotated. But what will happen is that this side from here to here is now not the same size as from here to here. That's what we have to remember when we do 2.5D design. It's a different size, and we'll have to find out what it is. Okay, so I'm going to go back to where I was, and I'm going to come over here. And so I can move the thing around, and if I do this, if I do a skew and a rotate, I have to put them both on the same line. Uh, because if I don't put them on the same line, it'll simply execute what the last line was. I won't do the other one, R-O-T-A-T-E, and say I rotate it 30 degrees as well. Okay, I'm going to do Control S to save, and I come here and I do that. Okay, um, so so here it. Oh, I have to put degrees. I'm sorry, D-E-G. Okay, now let's try it. Control S, and I'm going to come here and do this. All right, now it's been rotated 30 degrees, and it's been skewed 30 degrees, and it's beginning to look like part of the box here. All right, so what I've got to do next is I have to make, this is one face. I have to make three faces. So if I come down here to the bottom where I have my divs, I need to make, I need to make this. Control C, I need to make another div here. Control V, I need to make another div here. Control V, and I need to make another div. Oh no, there's, there's three, that's what I need. I'm gonna take off this position absolute for now. I'm gonna take this off here, and I'm also gonna take this off, okay? Keep it simple. So I have three division elements down here, and what I'm saying that for the division element, this is what I want. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to refresh. And there's my three faces. And they're all lined up in the same place. If I wanted to, I could call them different names. I could call this one the top. I could give it some, uh, some uh, content. I could call this the left. This is going to be the left side. And I could call this the right for the right side. I'm going to save that, come back here, and refresh it. And there it is, the top, the left, and the right. Now I have to move these around and get them all in the position and line them up just right. And, and the, the big point is, how am I going to do that? Well, first of all, what I have here, I'm using the div element to identify all of these right here. I really don't want to do that because I'm going to have to use the div element to define something else. But I'm going to need these three right here. So since I need to use all of them, I'm going to give them a class identifier, a class attribute. And this one here, what I'm going to call it is the face. OK. And I think, I think that's what I called it, uh, yeah, OK, the face. And this one here is also going to be the face. They're all going to be the same class. This will allow me to use the div uh, element for something else if I wish. It doesn't bind me to what I just have right here. Whoops. Equals the face. Okay. Now what I'm going to do up here in my CSS, I'm going to say I use the div element, but I want it to have the class face. Okay. So the dot here says only the ones with the class face. Well, that's the only ones I have. So if I do a control S to save this, and I come here and refresh, nothing really changes. What I'm going to do now is I need to make it so that I can move these guys around. And I need to have it so that each cube, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, each face has a unique identifier. So what I can do with that is I can put an ID here for each of the cubes. I can put an ID uh, attribute, and I'll call this the top which has nothing to do with the content. I can call this ID here, I'll call this one the left. 
and I'll call this ID here and this is going to be uh, equal to um, equal to the right. Control S to save and refresh. Nothing's going to change. What I've done here is I made it so that I can uniquely identify any one of these faces with the ID attribute right here. Okay. I also made it so I could identify all of them with the class attribute. So now what I can do is I can come here and I can put position absolute for all the faces. And when I do that, watch what happens. They all get scrunched up together. All right? But now what I need to do is I need to move them apart. So the first thing. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the, uh, the top one. Let's look at the top and let's move the top around, okay, and get it into position. So to identify uh, the top, I use the, uh, the pound sign because that's the ID for the top. And what I want here for the top is I want to put um, the um, left and right. So for the top, I'm going to put um, left and I'm going to make the left uh, say I don't know maybe a hundred pixels just to move it out okay and uh, let's see what that does there control us to save it and refresh it okay so the top's been moved out but it also needs to be moved up so I'm also going to make the top of the top be zero pixels Control S and let's see what happens now. Okay, there it is. The top's up there. Now the right has to really be brought to the right. So what I'm going to use is the identifier, um, pound sign, this is going to be right. Right? Okay, and then I'm going to make it so that the top on this one, I don't need a D here. Bring this back. The top on this one, this has to come down some uh, for the uh, left and right. And I'm going to make it just to pick, pick a value just to start with. I'm going to make it 100 pixels. Okay, bring it down. And then uh, for the right side, it's got to be, uh, uh, let's make that 200. Uh, I'm sorry. So this is the right. We're going to make that 200 pixels. Okay, and then we come over here, and we adjust it, and we do a control C, to, a control S to save it, and now I'm going to refresh and see what that is. Okay, there's my right. Huh, so I got to bring the right over more. I've got to bring the left uh, down a little bit, um, and then I got to start uh, rotating them and skewing them. Okay, well let's let's go in here and let's put the uh, let's put the left side in. Uh, so it's pound sign left, okay, and then put this here, and then the top for the left should be exactly the same as the, as the top for the right, 100 uh, px, like that. And then uh, to move it over, I'm just going to use the uh, right, I'm just going to leave that at zero pixels, okay, and come over here, close that off. Let's see what I got now, control S. I'm gonna come over here and refresh. Whoa, what happened? Why did the left come over so much? Um, let's see, there was the top is zero pixels. The top was 100 pixels, yet the right was zero pixels. Oh, okay, so that's the right. And what, hap oh, that's, and what happened to the left? The right seems okay, but for some reason, the left came way over. Oh, I see. I, I, this should be the left. This should be the left. This should be the left, and this should be the left. Okay. 
Let's do a control S to save it. Let's try it now. Okay, now we're getting there, all right? Once I got my coding correct. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now what we need to do is we need to, um, we need to start using the WebKit to make the transitions. So, what I'm gonna do for the left one, for the left one, I'm gonna use WebKit Uh, and this is a transition. And the transition for on the left one is going to be rotate. And it's going to be 30 degrees. And then it's also going to be skew along the x-axis 30 degrees. And this you can figure out, uh, just try different things, S-K-E-W, okay, I have to get the spelling right, S-K-E-W, okay. And then I'm going to come here and do a control S to save it, and come over here and refresh. Let's see what the left looks like. Okay, let's see, WebKit transition, uh, rotate 30 degrees, S-K-E-W, X 30 degrees. Let's see what I got here for the left. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it's WebKit trans transform, not transition. T-R-A-N-S-F-O-R-M, okay. Now I'm gonna save it, and now I'm gonna try it again. And there it is. Now, this left side begins to look like the box. Uh, we're gonna have an issue because uh, uh, when I made this, uh, a size changed here. That's okay, don't worry about that now. Let's go on the right, let's go on the right side now. That was for the left. Let's look at the right side now. Um, what I've got, I'm going to do the WebKit again for the right. I'm going to just do a control C. I'm going to come up here for the right. Control V. And what I'm going to do now on the right is I'm going to have it rotate minus 30 degrees. And we're going to have it so that the uh, the skew is a minus 30 degrees because it's going to be skewed the other way. I'm going to do a control S to save it, and I'm going to come here and refresh, and there it is. You begin to see the box starting to take shape. Now, for the for the top, what I'm going to need for that is again the WebKit transform. I'm just going to go control V to paste it. And what I need to do there is I need to rotate 30 degrees and skew X 30 degrees. Rotate 30 degrees and skew X 30 degrees. So let's do a control S to save it and let's do a refresh. Okay, so there's there's my top. Is that is that uh, let's see. Minus oh I'm sorry. For the top, I have to I have to do a minus 30 degrees, and the skew is a is a positive. Okay, so I'm going to do a control S to save it, and there it is now. Now there's my top. Now it's beginning to look like the genuine article. The problem is you see this side along here. I'm going to go up to the up to the screen. Stay on the screen, please. Here's here's where here's where the issue comes in. I could start moving these around and bring them together, but if you notice, this side here is much longer than this side. And remember I told you that when you skew these, uh, they're no longer square. So what I have to do is I have to reduce the size of this side right here, okay? This side here looks like it'll match, match here, but this side doesn't. So this, this side here is a percentage of what this side is. Well, for those that know trigonometry, stay on, stay on the screen, please. For those that know trigonometry, to find what the percentage is, what you want to use is you want to use the cosine, and I can come right here to the screen, the cosine of 30, and uh, 
you see the answer shown right there on the browser, but that's in radians. So I have to tell it I want it in degrees. The cosine of 30 degrees is 0 0.86602. So I have to scale that along that axis by a, a, an amount of uh, 0 0.866. So I'm going to scale it along the y-axis by 0 0.087. That'll be close enough. So I need to do that for the top. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come here on the top and I'm going to scale and I'm going to scale the um, uh, the uh, the y by point eight uh, what did I say seven that's close enough okay I'm going to do a control s to save it I'm going to come back over here and look at it and do a refresh Okay, let's see, what did I do? S-C-A-L-E, scale Y. Oh, uh, I have to put, do I have 0.87? I think I have to put this after that transform. Uh, let me do a control X to get this out of here. Come back in here, and this is the top. Do a control V to paste it do a control S to save it, and come back here and do this. S-C-A-L-E. And this is the top. Let's see, why did I have an issue with this? Scale, Y. 0 0.87. Oh yeah, I think it did. I think it scaled it. Okay, all right, now then, let's do this. Let's start bringing these together so that I can get, I can get one thing. And as I work on it, it's gonna be an issue. So could we pause uh, the camera and let me put these values in, please. Okay, all right, here's what I did. Uh, if you notice on the left, I got my nice little uh, great uh, box there, uh, the illusion on my box. One of the things that I had to do, if you look at the code here, I had to put the scale in the same line uh, with the skew and, and the rotate for that transform. Because if I don't, what it'll do, it'll, if I put it in a separate line like I had it before, it doesn't, it, it'll just do what the last thing was. So I must remember to put all these together. And I, obviously I didn't do that before. And by trial and error, I went ahead and found where the top and the left should be, the top and the left, for each of these faces. Now, the thing is, I'd like to treat this whole thing as a unit so I could move it around. I don't want to keep moving the individual faces around because as you saw from the code, that could be a real pain. So I'm going to use what, the, some of the stuff that we've been introduced to before. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to come down to the bottom and I'm going to create a parent class, DIV, a parent element, uh, for the, um, for the faces, and I'm going to call it a cube. So I'm going to make a division, and I'm going to put the ID to be equal to a cube. That's the ID. And I'm going to come here, and I'm not going to close it off here. I'm going to close it off down here. That's where I'm going to close it. Now, uh, we're going to stay on the, stay on the screen there. I'm going to come up here and explain something. What I did here is I created another division element. And this division element is now a parent of these three faces. And these three faces are siblings. And these three faces all have the same parent. Now, whatever I do to the parent will happen to all the siblings. If I move the parent over the whole cube will move now because these faces will do what the parent tells them to do. That's what I'm doing up here. So what I'm going to do, if I don't make any mistakes, I'm going to make it so that I can move the cube someplace. So stay on the screen there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come here and I have a new, new one here 
and I'm going to call it uh, the uh, cube. Okay. And for the cube, I'm going to make the top, I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to make the top, uh, say, uh, 60 px. Now let's see what happens. If I did this right, I'm doing a control S to save. Come over here, refresh. ID equals cube. I made the top 60 pixels. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't make position absolute. I have to do that for, uh, for this new element. So let me do this, P-O-S-I-T-I-O-N. Okay, A, B, S, O, L, U, T, E. Now let's try it. Control S to save it. Come over here and refresh. And bang, now it came down. Notice everything moved together. Why? Because the cube is now the parent of these different faces. So does that mean that I could rotate this cube? Wow, that'd be cool if I could do that. Let's try it. I'm gonna take this right here. Control C to copy. I'm going to come over here, do a control V to paste, and let's see if I can rotate the whole cube. That would be pretty cool. Wow, I can. Okay, so what this means is if I now use something like jQuery UI, I could animate this cube, right? Uh, I can make it so it's larger, so it's smaller. Uh, I can make it so that it moves. I can now make many of these cubes in the scene. The question is, how would I make a second cube? How would I do that? You see, you have all good exercises here. Let's stay on the screen and see how I would make a second cube. I'm going to come here on the screen. I'm going to take off the rotate like that. And I'm going to do a control S to save it, and then do a refresh. There's the cube. So how do I make a second cube? Well, what I need to do is I need to make another cube. So I do this. I'm going to come in here, do a control C, and do a control V. And I'm going to call this ID cube 2. Right? I don't need to change anything else, because the faces are going to be the same. So now what I need to do here is I need to come here, do a control C, come over here, a control V. This is now cube two. And I don't want the, uh, the top, yeah, I do want the top to be here, but I want the left moved over, don't I? For cube two, because I want to make another cube. And let's move it over, say, uh, two, uh, 100 and, 120 pixels, just to pick a number. Control S, now we do a refresh here. And there's my other cube. Not bad, huh? And I can make as many cubes as I want using this method. Okay, if we go back to the board here, please. All right, so what you've seen here is your first introduction on the road to doing 3D stuff. On the next lecture, we're going to show you, I'll show you how to use jQuery UI in order to animate this 3D cube. And on the lecture after that, I'll show you how to start making a scene that's a 2.5D scene uh, that you could actually use in a level for a game. Okay, that's it for this lecture. Thank you for attending.